We've all experienced the concept of something looking better on paper than in reality. We have a, a lot of expressions that we use. We say, uh, well, it's the thought that counts, or easier said than done, or it looked better on paper. Have you experienced that, where you discover something is really almost, it appears to be perfect uh, on paper, but then in reality it doesn't quite work out that way. Your trip, a family vacation, the uh, theory of time travel. You know, scientists say it is possible to travel at least forward in time, but the practical application seems impossible. We kind of bump into that today with Bach. Uh, his prelude is a beautiful, slow, thick, luxuriously harmonic prelude with, with harmonies like this. And uh, the kind of sounds we don't hear from Bach. Those kind of really beautiful harmonies. The problem is we're limited. We're limited by the instrument. Every instrument uh, that is a keyboard instrument that is plucked or hit or struck in some form all has the same unique limitation, something called decay. Now, not the decay of the instrument, the decay of the pitch. The frequencies go away once you strike the tone. Now, you can hold it, and that will allow the sound to go on for a little while, but eventually that sound decays away to nothing. Especially with a harpsichord, a plucked instrument that only had one string for every sound, the sound didn't last long. The modern piano, you can get away with it by pushing down the sostenuto pedal, the sustain pedal, but that sustains everything. So if you want to hear the difference between these two notes, they both get sustained. You can't really distinguish. So the prelude has a lot of problems with it being played on a traditional keyboard instrument, with, of course, one exception. You had to know I was going there. The organ does not require that. The organ can continue and sustain pitches for as long as you need it. So long as you got wind and electricity or somebody to pump the bellows, the organ can sustain forever. So, as a workaround, I decided I'm going to play today's prelude on the organ. Ta-da! But with the fugue, the organ has limitations as well. And frankly, I have always felt this way um, about fugues in general. It's just my own personal thing. Uh, but, of course, we all know what a fugue is by now. It's, you know, the um, a piece of music that involves separate musical lines, uh, and each line has its own individuality. They all play the same things, the subject and the counter-subject, and then they go on and do their own things. And I have always felt, why do we have to hear those separate, distinct voices on the same sound? And that's the way every fugue that Bach wrote for the keyboard is. It may be a five-voice fugue, but you're still playing it all on a single manual. The different voices are all intertwined, and you can't really hear all of the separate voices. And that's kind of always bugged me. I think the best way to hear a fugue is with five separate players, if it's a five-voice fugue, five separate players. Each player has their own part to play. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to do that. How, you ask? I'll tell you. Like I said, the organ is limited. This fugue is a five-voice fugue, which means there are five separate lines. And I went through with my colored pencils and I traced out all of the lines for each of the where each one goes and all of that, and I came up with a plan. Using the power of technology, I have pre-recorded three of the parts. See, you can't play all five parts at once, you understand, because uh, two hands. I only have two hands. And my feet qualify as a third hand. So I can only play three parts at a time, basically a trio. So I pulled three of the parts out of the fugue and pre-recorded them. Here's what you're going to hear today. You're going to hear the first sound, the first voice on this instrument.
if you remember, that's a principal stop. Do you remember? You remember back to June? Yeah, 10,000 years ago? The second voice is the cornet, which sounds like this. That's a flu stops, several stops together. The third voice is a reed. Remember our crumb horn? One of four reeds on our organ. That's the third voice. The fourth voice is a mystery as of right now. And the fifth voice is a principal stop in the pedal. Almost like the first voice. So we have three manuals and the pedals. That's four different voices. Each voice has a different sound. This sound, this sound, this sound, and this sound. There you go. So, Jim, where's the fifth voice coming from? You're going to have to wait and see. Here is the Prelude and Fugue in B-flat minor from the Well-Tempered Clavier, book one. 